welcome to All Saints Christmas Eve service. I have to start with a confession. I was not expecting to be talking to a camera for this Christmas Eve service. With a month of easing restrictions and hope and anticipation of fitting enough people in the church to have a fully live service, we were pretty excited. But after a busy week rearranging the plan, I am now not really sure why I didn't anticipate and plan for this possibility to begin with. Especially considering it's been that kind of year, where things haven't gone as we would have expected or hoped. But I think a year of experiencing the unpredictable and the unexpected is actually a perfect time to reflect on the Christmas story. Why? Because it's a story full of the unexpected. The unexpected to us, but not to God. Never to God. This story was always his plan and it was always his choice to use the unexpected to do something incredible. And we see it was no surprise to him in the words from the Gospel of Matthew. It says, The angel said to Joseph, Mary is going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to bring about what the Lord had said would happen. He had said through the prophet Isaiah, the virgin is going to have a baby, she will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. I don't know how you are feeling about life this Christmas, but we are glad that you are joining us to pause and reflect. So let's pray before we get into it. Gracious God, help us as we stop now to reflect on the wonders of the birth of Jesus. We come with different backgrounds, experiences and feelings this Christmas. You sent Jesus to welcome us all. Please open our eyes and our hearts to your love this Christmas. Amen. All right, it's time to get into this. Lift your voices, don't be shy, celebrate with joy that the Lord Jesus, the world's King, has come. Yeah. 
kids, I hope your eyes and ears are ready for our super fun Christmas Eve service because I have something extra special for you all to do during the service. And you're going to need to help the grown-ups with this because I am sure they're going to find it really hard. So ask your grown-up to get their phone out and get a picture of what's coming up on the screen now. All right. This is a list of things to look out for and to listen for during the service from now on. You need to keep count of how many times you see and hear the things on this list. You can see there's all sorts of things on there. Oh, marshmallow. Are you going to hear that? Oh, you just did. Well, let's see if that comes up again and we'll check in at the end and see how you went. Alrighty, eyes and ears ready. It's time to enjoy a video of some of our kids from All Saints talking us through the Christmas story. Mary, um, what was the prize when the angel appeared in her home? The angel come to Joseph and tell Mary he had a baby boy. Then, then they both go to Bethlehem to be counted. There's no place to stay in the inn. So they had to sleep in a stable. Baby Jesus born at night. Yeah, baby Jesus born at night. Jesus wasn't born in a hospital. He was born in a manger. I know that the donkeys and cows were there. Usually kings are born in special places. Not dirty old stables. And they sat in some hay that had pulled. from angels. The shepherds were scared of the angels. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. The angel had a good news for them. And the angel said, don't be afraid. A new baby born. And they rushed down to Bethlehem. They visited Jesus because they saw the star, but I'm not sure why they followed it. The star was so bright, bigger than all the other stars. And the three wise men see a star and follow it all the way to the stable. One man came to worship him. They worshipped him to bring presents. Special king presents. They bought treasure. Jewelry. Gold. Jewelry, gold and incense. Diamonds. And mirror. And mirror. And mirror. Gold, frankincense and mirror. Gold, frankincense and mirror. And he didn't use them. I will give him some, um, I will give him a baby toy. I don't know. Um, I know a toy. Um, a bath. I will give him some. Oh, that's easy. Da diamond, the finest diamond from the finest cave. Um, I think a toy angel. Sure. But this is nearly Christmas. 
Christmas. Um, we still celebrate Christmas because it's important. Because it's really fun and everyone gets presents. I don't know. Jesus falls from the dead. A Christmas story, not the Easter story. Because he's a king. Well, because Jesus is the best king in the world. Because he was special, and because he's and because he was um the savior and the king. He wants us to keep knowing about him. That's why we have Christmas. Because he can take away all our sins. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. J U S U S. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. This happened while Herod was king of Judea. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about it, he was very upset. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled too. So Herod called together all the chief priests of the people. He also called the teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was going to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. This is what the prophet has written, he said. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people, Israel, like a shepherd. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men. He found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me. Then I can go and worship him too. After the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them. It finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their country on a different road. Happy Christmas, everyone. My name is Lee, and I'm so glad you can join us to celebrate Christmas in this way. How are you feeling about tomorrow, about Christmas Day? Are you so excited 
that you feel like you could burst into a cloud of glitter and marshmallows? Have you been having strange Christmas dreams? Yeah, me neither. Are you just so excited to be giving and unwrapping presents with loved ones and sharing a meal with them? Or are you feeling much like the rest of this year? Are you just exhausted by COVID, frustrated by cancelled plans, saddened by the fact that you might not be seeing some friends and family this Christmas? Anxious? Or maybe is Christmas just often a difficult time for you, regardless of COVID. Maybe getting the family together is never easy. And maybe this year, there's someone who, who's not going to be there. Maybe it's a day of grief or loneliness, of desperately trying to hold it together and pretending like everything's okay when it's not. Well, when I was a little boy, Christmas Eve was the one night of the year that I wanted to go to bed early, but was too excited to sleep. You know, Christmas morning, all the presents and seeing everyone, like it's everyone's birthday wrapped up in one day. It just couldn't come soon enough. But we all know that Christmas is about Jesus's birthday, the day the Savior was born. But what difference does it make? What difference does Jesus' birth to make, make to what's happening in our lives right now and, and how we might be feeling? Well, remembering Jesus' birth is not going to get rid of COVID and it's not going to take away the hurt that you might be feeling at this time. But my hope is that you'll see that it's something so much more. The birth of Jesus it reminds us that the God of the Bible, unlike any other God, is one who steps into the muck of our lives. He isn't a distant God who is laughing at us, saying, I told you so. But in Jesus, he's come near and not just physically near, but he became one of us. He shared in our circumstances he shared in human emotion. He laughed and cried. He was loved and rejected. He's not a God we have to reach up to, to reach to his state of mind or his high moral standards. No, he's come down to us. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, but Jesus, the Son of God, he's been around for all eternity. He's always been here. So his birth isn't the beginning of his story at all. It's the pinnacle. It's the moment he came to us. And so if the God of the universe who made everything came to us, why did he come? What does he want with us? What does he want from you and me? Well, in our passage, Jesus gets some gifts. These wise men from a country who shouldn't care less about the birth of a Jewish boy travel a long way to bring their gifts, which made me wonder, what would I get the Son of God as a gift? A beard trimming kit, new sandals, burks, maybe milk and a plate of cookies. I mean, he must have everything. He's the Son of God. A gift voucher then? Scented candles. Everyone loves scented candles. Well, these wise men get their gifts recorded in the Bible. So they must be onto something. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mm, they're not really gifts that you'd give a baby. Although the gold would have been great for money poor Mary and Joseph. And the aroma of frankincense and myrrh definitely would have helped with the baby smells. But really, these gifts are expensive things you'd give to your king not a child. They get it. Jesus is more than just a baby. He's a king. And he's the true and forever king of everyone. That's who the Messiah is. That's why even these foreigners come so far. They get it. You know, there's been times when people have come to All Saints or called up 
and asked to speak to a minister. And I've said to them, yeah, I'm the young adult, youth and young adults minister here. And then they kind of politely try and back out and say, oh, I'll, I'll call back later. I'll check in later. In other words, I'm looking for a real minister. Ouch. <laughs> and these wise men from the east, they enter Herod's palace with their treasures and gifts. They stand before the guy who is the king of the Jewish people and ask to see the true king of the Jews. In other words, Herod, all this is not for you. You are not our king. Our king back in our own country isn't even our true king. Jesus is our king. Jesus is our boss. Ouch, what a slap in the face for Herod. But the truth is, I'm not the boss and you're not the boss. It's a slap in the face for us too. Jesus, he's the one who made everything, the one who made the billions of stars and ants and made the highest mountains and deepest ocean trenches, the one who made you and me, he's our boss. He's our king. And I, that's not easy to swallow because well, this is my life and I want to do what I want with my life. Do I really want God and his son calling the shots? Well, there's more going on here. These gifts, they're more than just gifts for a king. It says they opened their treasures. They're giving their most precious and valued things to Jesus. These aren't just token gifts. This is an empty religion. This is heartfelt. This is love. And that's why God stepped into the muck of our lives as a nobody, as a helpless baby, and as one who would ultimately suffer and die for you and me. He came so you'd know that you are more precious to him than you could ever imagine. He's a, he isn't a king who just demands submission. He isn't satisfied with empty religion. He came to win you over with his love so that embracing him, being part of his eternal family, having him as your king, as your savior, savior knowing him personally as your brother is not a duty or a religion. It's a joy. It's from the heart. It's, it's getting it, it's getting that he is a better king for us than we could ever be for ourselves. Why did he come? What does he want with us? What does he want from you and me? Well, it's the same answer any parent would give to their children. What does a parent want from their children more than anything else? A relationship that never ends. For their children to know that they are so loved, no matter what. A relationship that is deep, that is not based on duty or obligation, but one with and held forever by love. And Jesus wants a relationship with you that never ends. He wants you to know that you are so precious, so loved, that he came for you to die for you to free you from the burden of being your own king, to be with you. An eternal relationship, not because you feel obligated or because you grew up in a Christian home, but because you're swept off your feet by this king's extravagant and humble love. Why did Jesus come? He came for us. He came into the muck of this life to sit with us in it, to walk with us through it, and ultimately to lift us out of it forever. But this is the, the hope of Christmas. This is the huge difference that Jesus makes to our lives. Amen.
5 says, Give praise to the Lord and speak about him. Tell everyone what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell about all the wonderful things he has done. Praise him because his name is holy. Let the hearts of those who trust in the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and the strength he gives. Always seek him. Heavenly Father, it is good for us to remember all that you have done. Thank you for time at Christmas to stop and remember that you sent your son Jesus into the world to rescue us from sin and death, because you want to be near us. Thank you that we can tell everyone about what you have done. We ask that the whole world will come to recognise Jesus, that all people will hear of your never-ending love for them. God of comfort, we ask that you will comfort those in need this Christmas. Please comfort and heal the sick, lonely, overwhelmed and sad. We pray for people across Australia and the whole world we're struggling because of coronavirus. You are the God who helps us in our need. Please help all the countries and people affected by COVID. Mighty God, we ask that you will bring this pandemic to an end soon. Lord, give us patience and a trust in you, the God who knows all and works for good, even through difficulties and challenges. Thank you for all the good things we experience in our country. The sunshine, peace, comfort, food, holidays and people to help. Help us to persevere in being thankful despite the changes and upset to our lives and routines this year. Let this year be a reminder that we can turn to you, the God who knows and commands the future. Heavenly Father, you are the God of peace, joy and love. We ask that you fill us all with your peace, joy and love this Christmas. We ask that you will help us share your peace, love and joy with everyone as we start the new year. Amen. Well, our service is coming to a close. Kids, how did you go spotting all those things on the list? Should we check out how we went? I'm going to put the answer sheet up now. We're so glad you joined us this Christmas, even if it is in this unexpected and changed way. Please note that All Saints Church services are planned to transition from online to live throughout the course of January, and you can check out the details on our website, allsaintsepping.org. God has used the unexpected for something incredible. He sent Jesus into the mess of our world to offer us a hope and a future that cannot be changed. And this offer comes to us all from the certain and unchanging love of God. This Jesus who came to offer us this forever relationship with God is the one who should be worshipped and adored. So let's finish by singing, O come all ye faithful, come let us adore him. <laughs> <laughs>